Do you now believe? Thirty-two. Behold, the hour coming. Here is now come that we shall be that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own. I shall leave me alone. And yet I'm not alone because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. We thank you, God, for this world. We just ask that your spirit we expatiate on your word to us this day that we may be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I think it's pertinent that we ask ourselves this question. Why does God let tribulation hit his children? You are God's children. So, it's pertinent even to ask that question. Why does God allow tribulation to hit us who are his children? And we can get a simple answer to that. Why God allows tribulation to hit us? God harnesses the tribulations that is gathered them together. He puts bits in their mouths. You know, when you see a horse as the after rising, you know what they put in the house, the mouth of the horse so that it can be controlled. It puts bits in their mouths and he makes them Obey him. So God has a controlling power over them for our sake. He makes them to obey him to the end that those controlled tribulations bring God's children into a closer relationship and fellowship with him. In other words, the tribulations that God allows in our lives, they are meant primarily to bring us closer to God. We know that man invariably when we gather, say we are praying, we know that a lot of what we are crying for is about leisure, it's about comfort, it's about peace, not forgetting about wealth, wealth of sorts, and of course about health. There are so many things we ask for when we gather and we're crying to God. When you listen to people when they are praying, check it out. Three quarters of what you are praying for. It's all about these things that concern us in the matter of flesh. So when we cry to God like that, what does God do? God, more often than not, haven't listened to our cries, our prayers. Many times, that they allow trials 
and tribulations to come our way. But if you also check properly, you find that all the trials, troubles, tribulations, what have you, they always precede some good benefits and blessings that God is going to give to us. But God allows us to pass through these things to make us realize that our true comfort is beyond the river. Our true comfort is in heaven. Therefore, what is trying to teach us by allowing these trials and tribulations and things like that, is to say, focus more on that which is important. That is in heaven. All that you are passing through now is not your goal. Your goal is to get back into that kingdom of heaven which God gave to man through Adam, and which man lost in Adam. And so all that we are into now is trying to get back to that place. And that's the reason that Jesus Christ came to this earth, not to preach religion, but to preach about the kingdom of heaven that is coming again. So all that we are doing here on this earth, and we continue to ask God for this, for that, and so on, God is looking at me, he's looking at you, he's saying, do you realize your purpose on earth? It is because one man messed up. That's why my plan for you has not worked out. Go back to Genesis. When Adam was created in the spirit and then formed in the flesh, he wasn't really doing anything. He wasn't. Everything was there for him. That was God's purpose for man, for man's life in the kingdom of heaven. And once that was God's purpose, God will never change that purpose. We are going back to that garden of Eden. Whether you believe it or not, that is where we are going back to. Try always to remember how Adam and Eve meet. Because so that you are not surprised when that time comes and you find that that is how you are living. Daddy, what do you mean? I'll give you an example. Adam and Eve, they were not living in the flat. They were not living in the mansion. Get your mind prepared. That that's why we're getting back to. There was no bricklayer required. There was no architect required. There was no engineer required. Everything was there provided. But he who is not is the great provider. His name is God. This is what this matter is all about. But then we come here. And then all we think about is a life of ease, a life of pleasure. And of course, when you come with ease and pleasure and things like that, sin will come into it. They go together. 
And so you see, God is saying, you are missing the point. Therefore, you will have to take a step, take some steps to make sure that we get back into life. And that's why that is why we have and we must have trials, troubles, tribulations while we are on this earth before the kingdom of heaven comes to be established in the millennium. There is no way we are going to run away from this. And the earlier we try to understand this, the better. It is man who messed up that kingdom. And so we lost that kingdom. We the room to get it back. And that church. Some of you know it better than I do, and I think some sing it as well. I'm not sure if I see our hymn. The poem or did a psalm goes this way. He carried home to heaven on a free bed of ease while others fought to win the prize and sail through bloody seas. Some of us want to go to heaven of ease. The same heaven. Same through bloody seas to make the same hope. If you believe that the goal on earth is to make heaven, then you have to ask yourself, who made it before me? Like with them. Because you are not going to be new. You are not going to be something that has never happened before. Never. Nothing is happening today that has not happened before. The Bible says that very, very clearly. And I we want to make a move. Then we want to be realistic in our thoughts to ask. Those who made it, how did they? Well, it was, in, oh, just enjoying, you know, when we say enjoying life, is that how they made them? Do you know all this life in quote and unquote enjoyment? Do you have any such example that you say you want to follow? It is just not there. Then why is it that we have an attitude? Troubles and tribulations. It's like it's anathema to most of us. Oh no! I cannot have tribulation. God does not want tribulation for Some deceive yourself about that. That's it for me. And I'm not the one saying. Who is the one saying that it's God who has said it? It is because of this idea we don't want to think that tribulation should come our way, struggle should come our way, trial should come away. This is that God's. That is how we have, we have come to find to find one Baba somewhere. I 
and then the fashion today of rituals. Uh, so people are asking now, where can I do the ritual so that I can make I can make the money? Did you come on this earth to acquire money? Is there any scripture to that effect? What I'm trying to say to you, my dear brethren, is that we got it all wrong in our thought process concerning the matter of God. We have built a certain God in our mind, which God is not in the Bible. And that is why there's not going to be a crowd at the rapture. What does Ecclesiastes say? Ecclesiastes 12. I, I used to have it in memory, but it's, not, it's difficult now for someone like you to keep things in memory. Well, let me just see if I can find it again. Yes. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. That's Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. The death of God is working. It does not depend on any electricity. Nepa does not operate in heaven. And no matter, no matter the pestilence on earth, COVID and all that, there's no lockdown in heaven. So everything is working fine. The tape on each and every one of us has been working since Adam. It's not going to stop or to go to eternity. It will stop in eternity because then they are starting to record again. Everybody is of God, or will be of God at that time. But right now, we cannot say we are all of God. So let us look at some things that will help us. Let us look at some people in the Bible. Let's think about Noah. Noah and his family, they were in the ark. Right? There are something many of us need to address in our minds concerning that matter. Yes, we know what happened at the end of the flood. That's what we know. Which is that God destroyed the entire world, killed everybody. But that is not that you have after the fact. God won the world through his prophet Noah at the time. And don't be offended when I say, when I call him prophet, because that's what he was. But you know, we are so spoiled. Those of us who carry the Bible, we want everything to be spelled out for us before we can have anything called the revelation. If you don't know that Noah was a prophet of God, then it means you don't even know your Bible. So he went one And then God told him about the ark, and everybody was invited to come in. But it turned out that only himself and his wife, his nuclear family, himself, his wife, his three sons and their three wives, 